Welcome to the keynote podcast from Kingdom Faith. Today's message is by Pastor Colin Urquhart. Now, two things uh, we want to do this morning. The first is it's important after we've had a time of prayer and fasting like we have over the last 40 days just to see where we are in the purposes of God, to try to understand where he's got us and to see as far as we can what lies ahead of us. It's always good to stand, try to stand back uh, after a time like this to try to assess things like that. But also, uh, some of you, especially in the second year, you've been tussling with this whole business of predestination and free will. And uh, you're going to get the answer this morning. Because I'm going to give you a visual demonstration of how the two things fit together in Scripture. To the rational mind, the two are opposites. But in Scripture, there's definite predestination and there's definite free will. So we'll see how this works. And I'm, I'm just going to use uh, some illustrations from my hobby time, relax time, to help you understand this. But just first, the Lord says in Isaiah, you, you hear me quote this fairly often, I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. What I have said, that will I bring about What I have planned, that will I do. Now, there's very definite predestination in that. That what God is saying is that if he is at work, he is working according to his predetermined plans. And what we need to understand is, well, what does that mean and how does that fit in with me? First of all, this is a picture I painted recently. Now, I started with a blank piece of paper and a photograph, which was somewhat small of this, of an elephant in the wild. So I had to make a series of decisions. There's absolutely nothing predestined about this. I decided I was going to paint an elephant. It didn't come as a word of revelation from God. (laughs) He didn't say, thou shalt paint an elephant. (laughs) I had to make a series of decisions because this was just a photograph of an elephant in the wild with, uh, you know, the bush all around it. So I had to make a decision, right, how is I going to present this? I'm not going to paint all the background. There was a bit of dust in the photograph. I'm going to make this a picture of an elephant having a dust bath, as they do, if you've ever seen that, if you've been to countries where there are elephants or perhaps even in the zoo. So I made a series of decisions. This was entirely my free will. In a sense, God wasn't involved, except that he tells me to relax so that then I've got enough steam to, uh, to do what he wants me to do. So you wouldn't say that that was a, a visual demonstration of the will of God. Now, I need two tall guys That's what I like to do, to paint. One either end of this thing. But often I'm too tired. If I've been writing and translating all day, the last thing I want to do is concentrate on painting in the evening. But I, I might do a bit of that at weekends. So what I do when I'm tired is this.
I make rugs. Now, because that doesn't require the same demanding thing. But this is a picture, really, of the will of God in your life and how it works out. You can see there that there is a general pattern. It's a kind of representation of one of Monet's paintings of the Chinese bridge over his water lilies. And uh, you can see that there is a pre determined plan. Now, that is like God's plan for your life. Even before he called you, even before he chose you, he had his plan for your life. And what he's going to do is work according to his plan. Now, you have to put in the pieces. You see, this is made up, this is uh, quite an in intensive method, this. Um, I'll show you another one in a moment. It isn't quite so intensive, but this is small pieces of wool. I'll show you a piece. like that and you have an instrument like that and you have a double sort of in, in this one it's called an oriental weave so you've got to put all those in place God won't put them in place for you but you're putting them in place according to his plan so these colors represent, here is your revelation. There, that tells you what color. Actually, you see the white there is actually the darkest color of all, which is a very dark blue. So <laughs> things aren't always what they seem. So a certain <laughs> amount of concentration is needed so you get the right color in the right place. But you have to, I can't do it at this angle, so I can't fix it. You have to actually put all the pieces in according to the plan. Now, you could go against the plan. Supposing I, I was to say, well, I'm fed up with doing all this green. I rather like this pinkish red of the lilies. I'd like to put a piece of that in. And if I, if I was to put a piece of that in there, you'd say, ah, what's that doing there? Yeah. There's no pink in the trees. Yeah. That's me making a decision that is not in the plan of God. Yeah. And it immediately stands out as being something wrong. If I don't realize it, others will see, that's not right. It's out of place. So I've got to proceed each step of the way according to his plan and his purpose and then what he has planned will unfold and come to fulfillment. Now, I might make mistakes along the way. I actually made one on, on Sunday. I was concentrating on something else and not what I was doing and I put the wrong color in. Now, actually, because in this present part of the design, there, there's a whole lot of different colors there, which if you see it close, you can see, but you only get the visual effect from a distance. But the, um, nobody would have known. You wouldn't have known that I'd made a mistake because there you wouldn't see. If, if I'd made a mistake here in the bridge, it would have been much more obvious. But here you wouldn't have known. But I knew... And the pattern maker knew. Yeah. So I could have fooled everybody else, but I couldn't fool the pattern maker. Because he would have said, you haven't done that according to my plan. 
So what do you do? You have to go back and undo what you did. And then put in the right color so that you fulfill the plan of God. But once you've done that, there's no evidence that you ever did anything wrong. Which is what forgiveness is all about. That if we ask the Lord to forgive us, he forgives us. And there's no sign or evidence of that. It doesn't exist anymore. And we've been restored to the plan and purpose of God. Now, as I'm doing or living my Christian life, I may come to something in God's plan that I don't particularly want or like. What I'd like to do, therefore, is to miss out a whole. (laughs) Or even miss out a few holes and say, well, I'll pick up your plan a little further on. I don't like this particular fasting for 40 days or whatever it is. Uh, So if I do that, his plan for my life would be incomplete. There would be gaps, and other people would see that there's a gap there, credibility gap, really, in my Christian witness. So I have to respond all the time to the revelation of God. My job is, therefore, to know what the next piece of wool is that I've got to put in, what the next thing is I've got to do. If I do that, then God will enable his plan for my life to be fulfilled. Now, I might have some vague idea of what he's going to do in the future. I might not be able to see very much beyond where I am now. But the point is, if I keep walking with the Lord, He will make sure that His plan is fulfilled. Now, I've been kind to us. We see this is as far as I've got. But that represents where you younger ones are in your life now. I'm up here somewhere. (laughs) Which means I can look back on all that God has done during 48 years of ministry. Uh, so there's, there's been a lot. I'm, I must confess it's a bit laughable sometimes when people that have got about this far try to tell me, you know, how it should be and how it should work out and how the plan of God... We need a little bit of humility, don't we? Uh, Because God only raises up the humble. And you've got the experience of hindsight that, yes, you will have made mistakes along the way, but they've been rectified, and God's plan is going further on. That's why you need to learn from other people with experience who've done the business, right? And, And know what it's like to walk with the Lord and, and uh, to see his enabling. Okay, I think you guys can... Thanks. <clears throat> so this is something I did for one of the grandchildren. You see, if you complete the purpose, if, if, if you complete the pattern... I'm getting hooked up here. Oh, that's not clever. Oh, well, it's always out of me. <laughs> that's now you see all you've got to do is follow the plan because that was the same as the one you've just seen it had a pattern all I had to do is follow the pattern and that's the result this kind is much easier than the kind I'm doing now but uh So where are we now in God's purposes? Well, he's been doing a work in all of us during these 40 days. You've been on another planet 
if he's done nothing in you. Your body might have been here, but your spirit hasn't. Uh, but if you've been engaging with God, then he has been doing important things. But always our focus needs to be on what's next. See, just because you've had 40 days of prayer and fasting, you can't stop. You see, at any point, I could stop work on that. I mean, it's, I'm not doing any work on it now, so the plan isn't advancing as far as the rug is concerned. So at any point, we can opt out of the purpose of God. At any point, we could stop working on his plan and go and do something completely different that we wanted to do where we were making the decisions as to what we were going to do and how we were going to do it. which wouldn't fulfill the plan that he had for us. We've got to keep working at his plan. Now, the importance of this, because I, I, was, uh, I was praying oh, about four or five days ago when God began to give me this message through this rug. And he just said to me, this rug that you're working on now is an ideal illustration of how my will and purpose works out in the lives of my children. So I shared it with Caroline, and of course your wife always comes up with the awkward question. (laughs) Well, what happens to you if you opt out of the plan of God? And you see, the answer to that is you start on your own picture or your own rug that doesn't have his plan mapped out on it. And you can do that, and some people waste years of their lives doing that, but, of course, eventually they're going to have to repent and they're going to have to come back to his plan. Right? Now, I I won't get the guys to come and hold it up again, but just imagine that it's still there. It's also a picture not only of God's plan for your life personally, but his plan for the body corporately. Let's say his plan for kingdom faith. God has a plan for kingdom faith. He brought kingdom faith into being several years ago now, in order to fulfill that plan. So far, we have only fulfilled, like the completed part of the rug, we've only fulfilled a certain part of the plan. He has told us that the rest of the plan is revival, at least the next part of the plan is revival for a generation. like that bridge. We don't know exactly what that is going to look like, but we know that that's where God is leading us. Now, he, you can see, therefore, the tremendous responsibility there is on those in leadership in any church, but here in Kingdom Faith, because the leaders have to make sure that the whole body is working to the unfolding, the outworking of God's plan and not of any plan of their own. And the reason why in Scripture it says that, that uh, leaders should have double honor is because they've got double responsibility. Every leader has the responsibility to fulfill the personal plan that God has for his life but he's also got the responsibility of ensuring that the plan for the whole body is fulfilled. So there's a double responsibility there. If the leaderships make the wrong decision, then there's going to be mistakes, which again will have to be rectified 
for God's plan to be fulfilled. And we can't rush God's plan. For some of you, doing something like making that rug uh, would be like watching paint dry because it requires patience and perseverance because you can only do it bit by bit. It takes between an hour and an hour and a half just to do one row. Uh, On that one I'm doing now, probably about an hour and a half. So it's going to be many, many hours before the picture is complete. Something like the lion, you do twice that speed. But um, you have to persevere Otherwise, the plan will not be fulfilled. And sometimes we would like God to move much faster, to see the plan unfolding much more quickly than what we see. But what we can say now is, okay, God said 40 days of prayer and fasting. We have done that. God has done in our lives what he has done. Things are at a different place now, spiritually, than they were six weeks ago. We have all moved on in the purposes of God. There's more release of his spirit that is taking place in our lives. But I think we would all be conscious of the fact that there's still more that needs to happen. And the, the rug, you see, is not just, or the pattern is not just our times with God, but the fruit, what is produced, because God's plan is for fruitfulness. God's plan is effectiveness. If, if there's going to be a revival for a generation, then it means for a whole generation, the nation is going to be touched and transformed by what God is doing through the gospel. Now, those of you in the second year, we had an interesting discussion yesterday morning about what place should uh, Christians take in politics. And we saw that actually there's very, very little influence a Christian can have in politics. You can have a born-again, spirit-filled president of the United States, the most powerful man on the planet. And for eight years he was president, and really he made no impact from a Christian perspective that changed anything anywhere. So it isn't just a question of getting... Key people. The only thing that will transform the nation is the gospel. You see, you look back and say, well, who are the people that really impacted? And two people were mentioned by the students yesterday morning, uh, Wesley and and Booth, who started the Salvation Army. But you see, how did they make an impact? With the gospel. They got out and preached the gospel. It's preaching the gospel. It's preaching the gospel. Because the power of God to salvation is in the gospel. It's not just by being people of influence. You can have people of influence and they will make a difference over issues like Wilberforce and those with him that got rid of slavery. Praise God. That's an issue, but it didn't change a nation. It just got rid of slavery. Hello? It didn't save a whole lot of people. It just got rid of slavery. It didn't actually further the eternal purposes of God. It just got rid of slavery. And that's a good thing but it doesn't bring revival to a nation. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It's those that are living the gospel and get out into the world with the gospel that are actually, that's what revival is all about, impacting the nation with the gospel. You see, in the House of Lords, there are 26 bishops But they don't make any, you hardly ever hear of them saying or doing anything of any influence. Why? Because they don't preach the gospel. They just do a sort of political thing in that political environment. Well, that's not going to change anything. You're understanding what I'm saying? That we are those that have the gospel. We have to live the gospel and preach the gospel and get out there and proclaim the gospel because that's the only thing That will change the nation. That's what happens in times of revival. 
It has to be the preaching backed up in prayer. So these 40 days of prayer will now make us more effective and more fruitful. Then the more we continue, this is the important thing, as we continue according to the plan of God, keep putting things in place, keep that praying, keep obeying what he is telling us to do, so there will be more and more release of the Spirit, more and more fruitfulness, more and more effectiveness. So it isn't that we've come to the end of something. Praise God, the 40 days are over. What God has been doing is establishing a pattern. He says, right, now go on living with that pattern. Not necessarily all the fasting, but go on in that pattern of prayer. Go on in that intensity of prayer. Don't ease back just because of the 40 days are over. You prayed more, well, keep praying more. Because, you see, the more you pray, the more will be released, and the more that is released, the more fruit, and the more fruit, the more effective we are in the fulfilling of God's plan. Because, you see, the plan that he has is for his glory. And Jesus says that it's bearing much fruit that glorifies the Father. Are you there? So here in this corporate, if we understand that, that rug map now, in a corporate way, we can say, right, fine. God has been doing a good thing amongst us. We must keep going. Yes. Keep our focus on him. Keep being faithful to him day by day, putting in the next piece of wool. Seeking not to make mistakes, not to do our own thing, not to put the wrong color in because we, we want to do our own thing. Hello? You see, doing your own thing messes up the plan of God. Because actually you then have to undo your thing and get back to his plan. So now you can understand, I trust, more of... Predestination and free will. See, the plan is the predestination. In Ephesians, uh, we'll just use the NSV because I've got it here for a moment. It says, um, in love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons. That means he gave you a map as his son, as one of his children. Uh, through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we were also chosen, having been predestined, according to the plan of him, who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. Now, to put that in, words that I can understand. That means that God will do everything necessary by his grace and power in your life to see the plan for your life fulfilled. He will do everything that is necessary to see the plan for kingdom faith fulfilled, but he won't lift a finger to see your plans fulfilled. Because if you have any other plans than his plans, that's counterproductive to what he wants. Just turn, we're, we're finished with this, just turn to Colossians chapter 1, and if you have the um, study version. Chapter 1, verse 9. This is why, since we heard of what God is doing among you, we have never stopped praying for you. This whole thing has to be soaked in prayer, right? Asking God to make you aware of his will, that he will give you all the spiritual wisdom and understanding that you need. 
The reason why we pray like this is simple. We want you to live lives worthy of the Lord so that you please him in every possible way. And then you will produce much fruit for his glory through all the good works you do as you continue to know him better. Those are the good works that he has prepared for you to walk in that are part of his plan. He strengthens you with all the power of his glorious might and it is this power at work in you that gives you patience, enabling you to persist in doing his will, not yours, and causes you to maintain your joy, thanking God the Father for all he has done in you. And if you just go on to verse 19, you see it was God's good purpose to place the fullness of his life in his son. And it's been his purpose to place you in his son, in that fullness of life. So that through his life, death and resurrection, everything on earth could be brought back to his will and made one with all that is in heaven. So Jesus came not just for your plan, not just for kingdom faith plan, but for the plan for the whole of creation to get it back on course for God's plan to be fulfilled. Yes, everything was created by him and for his purposes. Well, we, we, we could go on and on read it because there's so much good stuff there. But what I want to finish by, is by saying this. If you understand this message this morning, you will be more devoted than ever in your heart to the fulfillment of God's plan for your life. Even though you may not be able to see what that is going to mean in detail, because we can't. We might get some vague thing, you know, well, God is calling me to be this, that, or the other. But you can't see how it's going to be outworked. It's got to be one piece of wool after another. Putting one thing in place after another. Being faithful day by day. If there's any mistakes, you get forgiven. Go back, undo it. So his plan is fulfilled. This should encourage us to seek the Lord even more than we have been during the last 40 days. Because the only thing that matters is the fulfillment of his plan for your life. Not what you want to do, not even what you want to do for God, but the fulfillment of his plan for your life. I mean, I'm up here somewhere. I've got a few more rows to go. But you see... I could stop and not see the rest fulfilled. Jesus says some start, those on rocky soil, when the going gets tough, they give up. They produced a few rows and the rest of God's plan went unfulfilled. There are even some that were going well, but thorns, Thistles were allowed to grow and choke the seed so they never finished the plan. Never came to fulfillment. So what does the scripture tell us? That we are to persevere to the very end. And that's why I say, you know, doing a rug like this, it's going to be months before I finished it because, you know, I do an hour here and an hour there, but It's going to require patience. It's going to require perseverance. But so does doing the will of God in your life. And I I often say to my wife, whether I'm painting or whether I'm doing this, well, I better get on and do a bit more because it won't do it itself. The painting won't paint itself. I've got to do it. That rug won't do itself. I've got to do it. God might have 
or, or there might be the plan and I might have all the wool available to me because I bought the kit but I've still got to do it. And God's got his plan for your life, but you've still got to do it. His plan is the predestination. You doing it is the free will. And above all, you have to do it in love. The reason why I'm doing this particular uh, rug at present is because that picture by Monet is one of my wife's favorites. So this is a labor of love. I said to her, right, you buy me the kit for my birthday and I'll give you the rug for yours. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, it's something that she will enjoy. But as far as the plan of God is concerned, it's a labor of love for him. Patience, perseverance, we're not going to give up. We're devoted to him for his will and his purpose. Okay, let's all stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Puratapari azatu bakara sidri Bazataria letu bakara sitri sato bakara sutri sun. Balandaria zataria letu bakara sitri sun. Bazataria letu bala sitri sato bakara sitri sun. Balandaria zato bakara sitri sarato bakara sitri sun. Bazandaria letu bakara sitri sato letu. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now just praise him that he's prepared good things for you to walk in. His plan for you is good. He hasn't planned sin. He hasn't planned sickness. He hasn't planned disobedience. He hasn't planned willfulness. He's planned good things. Oh, rasa tapa razato. Bara tapari eleto bakara sitri satari eleto bakara sita. Bara tapari eleto bakara sitri sandama. Vasandari eleto bakara sitri satari eleto bakara sitri sandama. Barandari ezato bakara sitri satari eleto bakara sita. Balandaria Zataria Leto Bakara Sitri Sataria Leto Bakara Sina Balandaria Zato Bakara Sitri Sataria Leto Bakara Sita Basandaria Leto Bakara Sitri Sataria Leto Bakara Sitri Sanga Basandaria Leto Bakara Sitri Sataria Leto Bakara Sitri Sanga Basandaria Leto Bakara Sitri Sataria Leto Bakara Sitri Sato Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Pura tapari eleto bakara sitri satari eleto bakara sitri sato. Bazandari eleto bakara sitri satori eleto bakara sitri sato. Bazandari eleto bakara sitri satari eleto bakara sitri sato. Bazatari eleto bakara sitri satari eleto bakara sitri sato. Barandaria letu bakara sitri satari letu bakara sitri sun. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Pura la basataria letu bakara sitri. Balandaria satari letu bakara sitri satori letu bakara sitri. Basandaria letu letu bakara sitri satu ba. Basandaria letu bakara sitri satari letu bakara sitri sandala. Basandaria letu bakara sitri. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pura tapari azata bakala sitri sandala. Bapara zatari letu bakara sitri satari letu bakara sitri. Praise you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. 
Now just tell the Lord that you're committed to his plan for your life. And come on, just pray now. Pray that f the fulfillment of that plan. Not just for today, not just for this year. Hallelujah. But to the very end of your life, you're going to persevere to the end. That patience and perseverance to walk step by step with the Lord day by day, month by month, year by year, to the fulfillment of his plan. You're not going to be one who gives up along the way. You're not going to come before the Lord on the day of judgment with a half-made rug, but with the picture completed because of his grace and his mercy and the way his spirit has enabled you. Enabled you to get it right. Because you don't do it in your own strength. You do it all in his spirit. Hallelujah. But you still got to do it. But through dependence on the spirit. Just thank the Lord that you're going to see the fulfillment of his word. In your life. The fulfillment of all the promises. That all the promises he's given you. As to what he will do along the way. He will do along the way. Hallelujah. Because he is faithful. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Pura tapare leto bakara sitri sato Balandaria zato bakara sitri sarato bakara sitri sandama Bazandaria leto bakara sitri sato Bazataria leto bakara sitri sato Bazandaria leto bakara sitri sataria leto bakara sita Come on Jesus Come on Jesus Pura tapare leto bakara sitri sandama Bapara satari leto bakara sitri satuba Balandari zato bala sitri satari leto bakara sitaba Balandari zatari leto bakara sitri sandaba Bambara zatari leto mazando bala tiri leto bakara sitri satuba We bless you Jesus we praise you, Lord. Thank you that you are working out your purpose. Thank you that it is, as you declare in your word, hallelujah, that your purpose will stand and you will do all that you please, Lord. That what you have said, you will bring about. What you have planned, that will you do. So we thank you, Lord, that we are cooperating with you in the fulfillment of your plans for our lives, for kingdom faith, for what you want to do in the nations to which we belong, and we praise you. Thank you that you are not cooperating with us for the fulfillment of our plans, but we are cooperating with you for the fulfillment of your plans. And we just give you all the glory for that, Lord. It's so good to know that by your grace and through your mercy, you will bring us to the fulfillment of everything that you have planned for us. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pura la bazataria leto bakarasita ba. Balandaria zataria leto bakarasita ba. And Lord, we're committed to the unfolding of your plans for this season, for what you want to do in these coming days and weeks. Thank you that we can't go jumping ahead of your plan. But we walk with you step by step, day by day, seeking to hear the voice of your spirit and being obedient to whatever you are saying to us, both personally and corporately. And we give you the, all the praise and honor, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Thank you that you will do it. Thank you that you predestined us in love to be conformed to Jesus, to be like Jesus. And thank you that you have put his spirit within us to enable all of this. Praise your wonderful name, Lord. Praise your wonderful name. Purata pari aleto bakara sitri sandama. Basatari aleto bakara sitri sandama. Basatari aleto bakara sitri satu bakara sitri sandama. Basandari aleto bakara sitri satari aleto bakara sitri sandama. Basandari aleto bakara sitri sandama. Basatari aleto bakara sitri sandama. Basandari aleto bakara sitri satu bakara sitri sandama. Basandari aleto bakara sitri satori aleto bakara sitri sandama. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. We bless your holy name. I want you to pray for the leadership in kingdom faith. You can see what a responsibility they have to keep everything proceeding according to God's plan. So just pray for them now. Just pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Poparazataria letter bacara city santa. Basataria letter bacara city sataria letter bacara city. Paparazataria letter bacara city santa. Basataria letter bacara city santa. Basataria letter bacara city santa. Basandari alero bakara sitri satari alero bakara sitri. Purata para satari alero bakara sitri sangha. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Purata satari alero bakara sitri satu. Pambara satari alero bakara sitri satu. Purata satari alero bakara sitri sangha. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you that your plan is revival for a generation. A revival that will impact the nation. Praise you, Jesus. And we know only the gospel will change people. Only the gospel can impact the nation. So we thank you, Lord, that you raise people up in kingdom faith to go out into the world with the gospel. Thank you for all those that will be saved and healed and transformed and delivered, set free by the power of the gospel. Vaparazatari alero bakara sitri satu. Vaparazatari alero bakara situ. Vaparazatari alero bakara situ. And we thank you, Lord, that though others may criticize and judge and accuse and do all kinds of things, nobody is going to prevent the fulfillment of your plan for kingdom faith. And we give you all the glory, Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. Let's praise him. Let's thank him. Yes, 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 yes. Now, I just want you to pray over your life. That whatever spiritual discipline God has put in place during the 40 days... That discipline will continue. Not the fasting and so on. But the fasting has helped you to become a more disciplined person. That's, that's part of the fruit of fasting. It's not so much, you know, that we just give up eating and some stuff. 
but it, you become more disciplined. So thank God that he's been working that in. You are now a more disciplined person than you were six weeks ago. And because of that, you probably have a more effective discipline in prayer. You see, it. Just because you're predestined doesn't mean God's going to do it. No, he's predestined you to do it. Hallelujah. He's given a plan. You work according to his plan. But you do it. So just thank him. Just, you know, the scripture says, devote yourself to prayer. Say, so, Lord, I'm, I'm going to continue in that devotion to prayer. I'm not going to ease up. I'm not going to back off. I'm not going to go back to a lower level. Thank you, Lord, that during these days of humbling ourselves, you have raised us up to another level. Now, Lord, we're going to live at that level, and we're going to go higher and higher with you in your plans and purposes. Come on, Jesus. And just thank him now that, that this is going to be a labor of love. Because you see, you're working out this pattern for the love of God. It's not what you're doing so that you get acclaimed or you feel fulfilled or anything like that. You're doing it for Him. And you know, on that day when you give account of your stewardship to the Lord, it says in the word, if we'd gone on reading in Colossians, that he will present you perfect. His plan for your life perfectly fulfilled because you walked in love. And we know that that means you walk in obedience right to the very end, persevering right to the end in that love loving obedience. So just, just thank him now for that further release of the love of his spirit that has taken place in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Puratapari eleto bakara sitri sato bakala sitri santama. Basatari eleto bakara sitri sato ba. Balatari eleto bakara sitri sato ri eleto bakara sito ba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just sing Here is Love Vast as the Ocean. Thank you for listening to this Kingdom Faith podcast. We trust it's been an encouragement to you. For more information and resources by Kingdom Faith and for our other audio and video podcasts, please visit kingdomfaith.com.